fixing the patent system. Except it's not the patent system that needs fixing, and I'm going to tell you why. So we start off. Congratulations, you all are sharing your innovations with the world. And in reward for sharing your innovation with the world, we're going to give you a 20-year monopoly on making money from that innovation. This is how the patent system works. You've just been awarded a US patent. And for your world-changing toilet snorkel, <laughs> we've assigned you the rights to this invention. And from that invention, you can go make a pile of money. <clears throat> so I'm being a little bit snarky here, but the reality is that the patent process is not designed for everybody. And this is the fundamental problem and the fundamental, mis fundamental misconception. When we look at the patent process, it's time consuming, it's complex, it's expensive. I just found out this morning that a patent I applied for two years ago was just denied in the first round of, of back and forth with the US Patent Office. This is after spending $25,000 that could have gone into product development. So if we look at this process, what we see is there's a lot of effort that has to go into recording your invention, in evaluating the technology, in evaluating the patent application, and a bunch of different layers of intellectual property before you even begin to do product development, prototyping, testing, etc. For large corporations, maybe this makes sense. But for the rest of us, we have this conception that being awarded intellectual property rights of any kind generates a ton of money. <clears throat> but the reality is, when you go talk to a venture capitalist and they say, oh, I'd love to invest in your, your new innovation, but what's your intellectual property position? If you say open source, they walk away. But we've studied the value of intellectual property and shown that the value of intellectual property, for most cases, is approximately zero. That's profound, because if you ask anybody on the street, if you ask an inventor, if you ask a venture capitalist, they'll say, you have to have a patent if you're going to make money. But again, the reality is that we don't make money when we patent technology. And you might be saying, well, who the hell is this Kip Bradford guy, and why should I pay attention to him? There are cases where it's true. You patent something, and that patent has value. And the, econ uh, the economics community calls this the case of a Mexican standoff, where Apple goes after Samsung and says, you're violating several of our patents. And Samsung produces a stack of patents approximately two feet thick and says, well, you're in violation of 10,000 of our patents. Who the hell has 10,000 patents? Well, Samsung and Apple. So Apple turns around and says, well, you're in violation of 9,990 more of our patents. And the only person that wins is the patent attorney and probably the judge who's sitting there fighting this battle back and forth of whose IP is stronger in the portfolio of the large companies. Now, again, we see time and time again that patents do not generate income. Some of the most profuse patent generating organizations like Stanford University, where they have 494 royalty joint generating patents. That sounds like a great number. It's one of the highest of any university. And we see that only 35 of those actually generate more than $100,000 a year. And primarily, those are in the pharmaceutical realm. Almost exclusively, universities and research organizations that make money actively off patents or patent royalties make that money in the pharmaceutical realm. Sorry, if you want to take a picture of that, go for it. This is all in a Forbes magazine article, uh, Universities That Turn Research Into Revenue. So let's take a step back for a moment. Why was patent law created in the first place? I found a great article in the Iowa Law Review which spells out the whole purpose of the patent system, which is fundamentally to drive innovation. How do patents drive innovation? by rewarding people for sharing. What community are we in that shares and shares actively? Well, the open source community. And what we see here is that the patent system fundamentally does not reward people for sharing. There's no economic rent 
no economic benefit gained from patenting a technology. So, when patent law was created, the world was different. When you patented an idea, when you patented a technology, the connection between the patented invention and the money generating innovation was very intimate. The inventor was the innovator. The inventor brought the technology to market. The markets were ripe with problems to be solved and people patented the solutions to those problems. But today, we see a very different picture. We see that the patent system was fundamentally built on this idea that we can share ideas, we can share innovations. We were rewarded for that sharing with this 20-year monopoly, and that allows somebody else to build on your innovation year after year. It also means that you have to continue to innovate, because if you don't innovate, somebody else can produce what you've produced. So we get to the question of what's invention versus innovation? It's often mistaken that invention and innovation are the same. But there's a landmark legal case recently that raised the bar for invention versus innovation that said, if in hindsight, it's in any way obvious that by combining different technologies, different solutions, you could create the new patented technology, then we've, we will disallow for that patent to take place. So we just raised the bar and just separated invention and innovation even further. Sorry. So the difference of invention and innovation has become greater and has become more profound, and the impact of that on the economics of how we patent, what we patent, why we patent has changed. If you look at this picture here, on the left we have an invention, on the right we have an innovation. Which of you would invest in the invention on the left? Oh, come on, one hand. Thank you, thank you. And which of you would have invested in the innovation on the right? Bunch of apple haters out here. <laughs> but fundamentally, the point is sound, that innovation drives economic value and economic benefit. Yet we're rewarding the invention that does not. So, I propose a change. I propose that we can continue to have the system of patents that rewards the few and far between, the pharmaceutical companies that come up with new scientific inventions, new pharmaceuticals, new chemicals. If, if it requires $100 million to develop a new drug, then fundamentally I might be okay with rewarding some sort of monopoly in order to recoup that investment because I'd like to see invention continue. I'd like to see those broad scientific discoveries move forward. But at the same time, the patent system has these built-in rewards. And what's unfair to the open hardware community is that we are the ones driving innovation. We are the ones who embody the spirit that the patent system was created for by sharing ideas with each other and allowing each other to build on top of those ideas And again, from the Awala review, history shows that we're the ones making the changes. We're the ones pushing technology. So why are we left out of the economic benefit? People talk about fixing the patent system, reducing the barrier for entry, having a dual patent system like Australia where you can walk into the patent office, get a patent instantly without any review, and later on, people, if somebody wants to invalidate your patent, they can go ahead and do that. But it reduces the barrier to entry, it reduces the cost of getting a patent. But the fundamental problem still exists. Patents are for inventions. Innovations drive economy. So let's have patents 3.0. I was originally gonna call this the Open Source Hardware Innovation Tax Credit, O-S-H-I-T but decided that I needed a slightly more family-friendly name for it. So, between those of us in the community, you can call it the Oh Shit Tax Credit. I think we should call the Open Source Innovation Award, Oh Sir. But what I propose is that the federal government take up the challenge of creating a tax credit for revenues generated from open source income. And that states 
reward companies that move into their states and bring open source technologies with them. And I call on you to share this message. Thank you.